Hi, my name is Sanga Lindsay. I'm a landscape architect here in North Vancouver. Today I'm going to talk a bit about worm composting. It's the urban way of dealing with your vegetable matter, your green matter, and I'll show you some examples later. Uh, a way you can do it indoors. Right now we have ours outdoors for the summer, but once the winter hits, we do have them in our office. This is a great little uh, prefabricated system. It's odorless, it's clean, it's uh, almost bomb proof, and it does support uh, the red wriggler worms, which is the most ferocious uh, type of uh, worm that will reduce your compost in a matter of weeks, or your vegetable matter into compost in a matter of weeks. The components of this system are as follows. You've got a catch tray at the bottom with a spigot. This catches all the effluent that will be produced in from the various trays full of compost. While the worms are breaking down the compost, some, the liquids will be released. They work their way down through the trays into a catch area. There's a spigot here that you can turn on and off, and that effluent actually is great to harvest and use for watering because it's a very nutrient-rich um, fluid as well, great for plants. So you want to use every part of the composting system. So that is your effluent catch tray. The next layer, and you see one, two, three trays right here, are the various layers, and I will show you how that works. First of all, the lower layer, there's the tray. And what we did a long time ago is we put in a, a filter fabric, and that separates any of the compost and any of the uh, worms from that lower catch basin tray area. The next layer are these series of trays. And here you can see some of the rich compost already. Let me just see if I can show it to you. This has been in here for about a year. I have actually been quite lazy and I haven't really harvested yet, but this is the result of all the matter that's been composted from the worms. You can see a couple of little guys still in there cruising around looking for anything else to decompose. Now, I'll put the next layer or tray on top just to show you how it looks like. These series of trays actually have mesh in them. Um, right now they are a little bit uh, clogged with the compost, but you can see some of the worms hanging out. So what happens is you fill up your first tray when you first get your worms. You fill it up with your worms, your shredded paper or coconut fiber if you do happen to get packaged worms. I got about two pounds of worms for my system to start with. You pack it with that plus some vegetable matter to get them going. Now as you can see, these trays here are fairly decomposed already, but I'll show you in the last tray what the matter looks like. But what happens is, as the compost, or as the vegetable matter is composted, the worms will work their way up through this mesh system to the next layer that you fill with more vegetable matter for them to compost. So here's probably an easier example of seeing how that works. Again, we've got another tray full of great compost, worms sort of in and out between the two mesh layers. And here is my final layer right now just to show you what it looks like, full of vegetable matter. So I'm just going to take a little bit of a pull back just to see if you can even see some of these worms working their way through the compost and upwards. So, a little trick, when you are feeding your worms, red wrigglers are ferocious. A couple pounds can eat about a handful of compost every week. And what the worms do like to have is things like any kind of vegetable matter, lettuce here, tomatoes, peppers, onion skins, eggshells, and then paper, this is or a dry good. This is absolutely important. Actually, the uh, worms will even eat dryer lint and um, pizza boxes even. So what you want to do when 
you are feeding your worms each week is you want to actually, this one's a little bit messy, you want to put a bunch of your compost material to be composted. We've got some bread in here. And here's our little mascot, Shelby, who uh, every time she sees food, but she's not a worm, so she isn't going to be composting these. You put your layers of compost in the corners of your box because then what that will do is the, comp the uh, organic matter will decompose over time and as one chunk decomposes faster than the other the worms will actually move like a, a small herd if you will between each of the, the masses of uh, organic matter and then this is also important because you don't want this to get too wet. Worms can actually drown um, if it's too moist. So this is where the paper comes in handy. I use shredded office paper. You want to do a mix of 50-50 dry or the shredded paper to the organic matter that you've put in. And all you want to do is put a nice thick layer on top and that helps to maintain the moisture balance. Red wigglers, the reason why you haven't seen them too much in this box is that they're all hiding in the dark. Red wigglers hate the light. And so they sort of tend to stay under the paper, into the organic matter, and don't come up too close to the light. Once you pack that all in quite nicely, you just put on the lid again, which is vented. Put her back on. And for, like I said, we have about a couple pounds of worms in here. So every week to two weeks, I grab a couple hand, a few handfuls and put a handful in each corner of my box. And within a week, you'll be amazed at how much these guys have broken down that matter. Now a little tip, if you do break down or manually chop up some of the stuff, like I, I've just put it in all whole, it will help the decomposition process go faster if you chop it up into bits, but I'm a bit lazy, so I just let the worms do the work. Now the worms, just as a little footnote, they are uh, actually going after the molds and the bacteria that are acting on the decompo decomposition process of the vegetable matter. They don't actually eat and chew up the vegetable matter. The molds and the yeast actually break down that vegetable matter. That's why they're all gray looking. And it, that's what the worms are going after. That's what passes through their system and then comes out the other end. That's how you get compost. One of the best composts that you could possibly use in your garden. Hope you've learned a little bit about worm composting. My name is Sanga Lindsay. I'm a landscape architect. If you want any more information, please visit my website at www.sangadesigns.com. Thanks for watching.